I now like to invite Mr. Shrishtan Patara, uh, another one of our speakers who we waited for a whole year. We missed the opportunity of having you here last year. He's uh, with the Development Alternatives Group uh, and the Chief o Executive Officer at Tara. An architect by training, he's been with this group since 1988 providing research expertise, management capability, and strategic direction to teams working in the areas of habitat, renewable energy, water, and sanitation, waste recycling, and livelihood support systems. His work is focused on the co-creation of multi-stakeholder-based service delivery models that promote sustainability through local economic development, regeneration of the environment, and greater social equity. Mr. Patara, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Gayatri. Um, um, thank you. It's a real pleasure and honor to be here. And as uh, uh, Gayatri said, uh, I wish I could have done this a year ago, but it just uh, didn't happen. Uh, the gods didn't permit it. We got uh, into some trouble uh, with the project. Uh, and uh, there was a bit of an emergency. Um, I, uh, w when I saw the agenda, the final printed version today, I was uh, really happy uh, because the title for our session was uh, Talking to the Experts, uh, which uh, I uh, concluded would mean that I'd uh, do very little talking and it would be the audience that would be talking to the experts. But I was equally mortified by the label uh, of experts that had been given to, you know, me at least. Uh, uh, not so much the other speakers who've done uh, such remarkable work. Uh, because I think uh, over the last uh, three decades now, uh, the work that we've done in the area of uh, social development, uh, primarily technology enterprise related in sectors such as renewable energy, water sanitation, housing, uh, et cetera, uh, has been more the work of an explorer. Uh, rather than any kind of expert. And uh, what I hope to do here today is to share a little bit of that experience. I won't talk uh, too much about our work. In fact, I'll try and talk as little as possible about our work. Uh, but um, try more, uh, you know, by way of, again, experience and insights to throw out a few uh, concepts, a few questions, uh, which I think think, I believe, will be helpful in addressing some of the issues that we were talking about in the morning, uh, the panel, uh, when they were talking about uh, questions of scale uh, and, you know, our view of scale and how we could get things to scale or take things to scale, uh, but also address, I think, some of the concerns which over the last three or four years uh, in which I've had the good fortune to be associated with uh, the Tata centers, uh, both at MIT and IIT are, I believe, concerns uh, where there seems to be a gap, um, a valley of, uh, I, I, I shouldn't, it would be unfair to call it a valley of death uh, because uh, everything's alive, projects are kicking, right, and they're moving forward, uh, but certainly a challenge of some sort in terms of, uh, you know, the students uh, and what I've heard uh, uh, them talk about, uh, the challenges that they face in terms of getting things out into the market and simply because you know we've had some experiences on that account uh, I thought it might be useful to talk a little bit about that uh, this slide incidentally by agreement across the organization was designed as a slide that no one should be able to read um, and I don't think you quite can apart from the fancy stuff up here which talks about you know for how many years we've been around and you know the number of people and so on and so forth uh, the only reason uh, that we put this up is that there's been a growing uh, portfolio of solutions uh, that we've tried out from simple products to technology packages to small businesses. Uh, and um, apart from making the point that we do a lot of work, uh, the other point that we want to make here is that uh, two thirds of these have not gone to scale. Uh, Many of the things that we do, as you know, many innovators do and institutions do, don't always work out. But there's always a lot to learn from those, and uh, they help us, you know, move along in this journey. Let's break this down now, uh, and I'll try and go. So I, I incidentally found something like this. Uh, I don't know if any of you have used it. It's really useful. So I'll try and stick to time as well. 
uh, and therefore will go fast. Let's break this down. Uh, when we talk about bridging the incubation gap, uh, we'll work backwards if that's okay with everyone. The first thing you know, we need to remember is that there is a gap. Uh, I was a bit worried about stealing pictures off the internet. Uh, it can be a dangerous thing to do now, uh, and therefore I didn't put Mr. Rajnikanth's picture out there, but as many of you would know, this famous South Indian actor reminds us that we have to mind it. And it's something that, uh, you know, we talk about, uh, but uh, we are surprisingly unaware of uh, the fact that there exists a huge gap uh, between uh, innovation and the market. Or if we're aware, uh, we have a, a rather shallow understanding uh, of uh, what exists uh, uh, in, in that uh, period of the cycle. Uh, there's been a lot of academic work, there's a lot of work done by practitioners. In our view, uh, these uh, stand alone, and there are bits and pieces that you can pick up as you go along. Uh, but very little act work has actually been done on the processes that would bring uh, different kinds of competencies together uh, and, you know, that would help people uh, bridge the gap that exists. Uh, a sample of something that we've tried to do in-house, um, and in-house is inadequate, as I'll go on to speak later on, uh, speak a little bit more about later on. But at least in-house, uh, under the umbrella that is called the Development Alternatives Group, uh, what we've done is we've tried to set up a spiral of sorts uh, where you start with innovation. Yeah, it should be somewhere here. We have it at the middle. Uh, go on to incubation implementation. Uh, ultimately hoping to seek impact, but in our corporate strategy. These are the five eyes of our corporate strategy. We've also included something called influence. Uh, for the very simple reason that uh, we realized over time that there's a lot of work that innovators, incubators, or people who want to roll these out at scale need to do by way of creating consensus, building awareness, influencing mindsets or mind space, if you like. Uh, and this exists at every level, at every scale, you know, from the smallest of the villages right up to policy makers at the national level. Uh, International also perhaps. It does help if you can link your small project to a sustainable development goal and you know, create some amount of influence around that. Uh, and it's, uh, it's not linear, right? Uh, and that's why it's, uh, we've conceived of this as a spiral and there are processes within the organization where any product or any technology uh, keeps touching these bases as it sort of rolls out or spirals out uh, uh, from just being an idea to actually getting out there into the field. Um, if we look at incubation itself, uh, and this, uh, this section here is a personal view uh, that I'm sharing, uh, the question to my mind is really how can we incubate or how can we complete or fulfill the in incubation function without being incubated? Uh, it's, for some reason, it seems to be the dominant paradigm that uh, an innovator will develop something and that something will have to be placed in an incubator or the innovator himself or herself will need to be incubated and there'll be some business that grows out of that. Uh, while that may work, uh, and it certainly worked for you know, all kinds of startups, uh, many of whom have gone to scale really fast, it's our belief that if you're talking about issues which are poverty, environment related, uh, things that uh, you know, are challenges in the development sector, uh, the complexity uh, of uh, the problem at hand and therefore the complexity that you need uh, in the solution or, it's a, or, or, or the uh, robustness that you need in the solution to be able to deal with that complexity is such that a simple, straightforward, linear kind of approach will not work. Right? Uh, it might you know, work for some new tech product, but it won't work if you're talking about transforming the lives of people um, in villages, rural India, small towns, urban areas where you know, problems can be complex. And therefore, uh, 
you, you, you need something in which there are several par parallel processes going on at the same time. Uh, there are actors who are working together, et cetera. Uh, an example of what I'm talking about, uh, this, is, uh, uh, this, this is a slide uh, that I often say is my job description. Uh, as uh, you know, a senior management person within Tara, which is how do you take a product out into the market beginning with a lot of grant funding. Uh, and grants are good. I have no problem with grants. It's what keeps our organization going. Uh, and they're good also because uh, we, we need assistance to innovate. Uh, in fact, I think it's quite the tragedy of the last uh, 10 to 15 years maybe that uh, funding available for innovation has been drying up. It's been getting smaller and smaller. Uh, you can today uh, in India uh, quite easily walk into the government, uh, walk into a government office or walk into a corporate house and get funding to build 10,000 toilets. Uh, 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 believe me, because we do this almost day in and day out, it's five times more difficult, probably even more than that, to get one hundredth of that funding to do any kind of innovation on a, a sanitation solution, right? Uh, it wasn't the case uh, 25, maybe even 20 years ago. So one, you need to do this. Uh, two, we recognize the fact that uh, you know things cannot be grant funded forever and therefore you need to also bring in some kind of commercial investment and hope that over time your revenues take over. Again, within uh, the uh, corporate structure that we have, we have therefore three kinds of entities. You have development alternatives that handles the innovation. You have Tara that handles the incubation. And then we have a handful of companies, uh, this being one of them, Tara Life Sustainability Solutions Private Limited, that takes it to market. Uh, I'm using this as an example simply because it's in-house. It's something that we know really well. But as I'll try and point out here, if we are to address uh, or, or to, if we are to have impact at scale, uh, then we need to do what uh, several of the speakers were talking about the morning and I was uh, delighted. Uh, I wanted to jump on stage and, you know, sort of shake her hand when uh, Soumya, um, so Soumya, Soumya, yeah, Soumya said, uh, you know, the word, the big takeaway from this session has to be collaborate, right? Uh, because what we are trying to do in-house in the development alternatives group, uh, you know, performing these different functions, uh, uh, you know, having these kind of entities actually needs to be done uh, societally uh, at uh, the level of a network, uh, a social institution of sorts, uh, movements, collaboratives, et cetera, if you like, if we are to have any impact. And therefore, the question uh, that we ask increasingly and uh, the answers to which, you know, we're finding the answers, but we're letting those answers influence our work is how do you manage an innovation incubation to commercialization kind of process that doesn't look like this, but looks as messy as this? Uh, what kind of a system do you need to put in place where this can happen? Right, where you have, right, from the user to the producer, marketer to the innovator to other kinds of people who provide inputs are working together uh, so that we can break away from uh, what might sound very comforting but is inadequate, which is a step-by-step -step process where you go through these kind of phases. Uh, we're convinced you need different kinds of people. You need them working together. Um, and if you get it right, uh, then not only will you have better results, uh, you won't you know, make that many mistakes and come back to ask questions, but you'll also uh, do it faster. You'll do it right and you'll do it faster. So this is what occupies a lot of our stuff. If this might sound you know, theoretical, conceptual, it's not. Uh, in the last 10 years or so, uh, with uh, inputs uh, from several sources, but primarily from a gentleman who works out of Bangalore, uh, the PNP group. Uh, he's an expert on interorganizational effectiveness. Uh, we've brought methods, tools, etc., into our work. And uh, I did want to, I hope it's visible from all the seats, uh, listening to a few of the speakers in the morning, I did want to 
make a pitch for something that's called systemsplay.com. Uh, you can go to this website. Our uh, uh, tagline is collaborate to innovate for people and planet. Uh, Systems Play is a repository of knowledge resources uh, that we've set up uh, with a few people in Brazil, in South Africa, um, other parts uh, of Asia, and a few you know, floating uh, resources that we have across the world. It's a network uh, for precisely this purpose. People who want to be systemic uh, in their approach to innovation, people who want to collaborate uh, should have the tools to be able to manage that process. Uh, there's already some stuff up there. Uh, it's not just material that you know we have developed and are throwing out, but very much a platform in which you know we'd like experiences, case studies, tools, methods uh, uh, for everyone who's interested in you know this uh, particular way of working uh, to be able to contribute also to that. Um, I can skip this now. It was just about, you know, the organizational setup, uh, saying that, you know, it's a lot of learning there. Uh, I added these two slides simply on account of a uh, few uh, points that were, again, made in the morning in terms of uh, what to work on. Uh, and for us, it's not, uh, you know, really a question of uh, uh, chemistry or physics or biology. Uh, and those aren't the starting points. The starting points are actually whether, uh, you know, you'll be promoting environmental sustainability. Are you addressing those problems? And therefore, uh, building materials and waste, for example, are areas of intense focus for the organization. And the other uh, starting point for us is whether those solutions would enhance livelihood security and the quality of life. And therefore, uh, what, uh, agri food related stuff services etc that you know people can earn incomes from and basic needs become an area of focus that's all for now at least thank you very much i hope to connect with everyone much more in the future thank you good evening sir yeah so uh, according to you like i'm also working with uh, several incubators so i would like to ask according to you uh, an ideal incubator what did it should be in mind to make that product or that innovative idea into the commercialized product and how to get that right people and find that uh, this is the, has the market potential. Uh, right, right people would mean... Uh, uh, right innovators for commercializing the product into the market. And, you and, have and you're, you're not the innovator yourself. Yes, I'm not the innovator. I'm the incubator partner. I'm, yes. Oh. Um, and, and one, you're interested in, you know, connecting with a lot of people who have developed new products or technologies, yes. and then you want to help them uh, take it out. Okay. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, one, uh, it, it, I mean, is there easy access to potential users? Uh, can you can you help them? Uh, uh, test their product, validate it, uh, or uh, the, the, the phrase we use is, can you help them validate conditions under which it could scale? Right. Figure that out. That would certainly be very, very helpful. Uh, I think uh, there'd be some amount of basic uh, business development or business management expertise that you'd have to provide. Uh, I think a lot of uh, stuff in terms of uh, what could go wrong, uh, you'd have to bring, uh, the, you, you need to bring people in uh, to your question about who, you know, is required, uh, people who don't think alike, right, uh, who can look at that particular solution from many different angles. Right? I, I don't know if I've, you know, answered your question or even understood it completely, but those would be, I guess, the top three qualities. Um, a lot of incubators uh, look at uh, things from a financial perspective. Uh, I mean, th th that's again a sort of dominant view that they tend to take uh, in terms of how to get something investor ready. Uh, in our line of work, that's not, you know, so important uh, because again, uh, we're not necessarily 
uh, when we talk about incubating things, we're not necessarily talking about incubating them, taking them to scale so that you make a lot of money yourself, right? Uh, in fact, to that point on scale uh, in the morning, uh, the, th there's a huge difference between wanting to create impact at scale as against scaling up your own business. These are, these are two very, very different things, right? Uh, if, if we wanted, say for example, our objective was, uh, we as in anyone and their partners, uh, and again, I'm talking about a highly collaborative model with you know, shared goals, shared purpose, et cetera. If we wanted to create impact at scale, uh, we wouldn't take a view uh, when incubating something that our primary objective is to raise funding and then obviously you know, provide high returns to the people who put money into our business, right? Uh, because the gains could, uh, one would go to several people and would also be diversified in nature. Yeah. So. I have a um, clarification question. I'm just a little confused. You said you don't want to incub, you don't want to, um, we need you want to inc incubate without being incubated. Yeah. So what is being incubated and is it, why is it a bad thing? Uh, I've just seen, uh, <laughs> thanks for asking that. And uh, we, 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 it, it's, you know, in the last year or so they were trying to build some amount of coherence around this idea. So I might, might not communicate it all that well. Uh, we've just seen lots and lots of uh, young people, right, who, uh, have great ideas who have developed. I mean, we saw some of them in the session before and we see them every time we go to a symposium either here or in Cambridge. People who've got great ideas have developed prototypes and are you know, really stressed about how their business can grow and conclude almost automatically that that would mean that they need to place themselves and their product in an incubator, right? So that's the idea behind uh, you know, of, of the incubation function being performed, and if I connect that to the other one, uh, more collaboratively, right, in an ecosystem without that person or product necessarily having to be incubated by anyone, right? Uh, it, it, we, we, we just feel it works. I mean, uh, incubators succeed. We just feel that for the kind of things that we want to work on, it's too narrow a definition of how that function should be fulfilled. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, <clears throat> you mentioned that many of your uh, products could not be scaled up. So what is the important learning from that? Because many times when we're talking about scaling up, we talk about uh, replicability. So many of these solutions probably need uh, local context and local, again, renovation or some yeah. adjustment to the local conditions. So have those lessons from the so-called limited success, have they led to some other innovations and the, has the cycle continued? Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the biggest lesson, uh, both in terms of, you know, what uh, situation, instances in which something went wrong and then uh, examples where something went right, uh, is in terms of, uh, making sure that you have inputs from different kind of stakeholders uh, throughout the process. Uh, the worst mistakes that we have made, uh, Somin is, is he there? Yeah, there he is. Uh, he's our chief technology officer of, of sorts. Uh, so bear with me on this. Uh, the worst mistakes we've made is when two people in office have got together, you know, thought they had a brilliant idea, wrote a proposal, submitted it to the Department of Science and Technology or to a foreign donor, right, and worked three years on developing something that just doesn't work, right? That, that's the extreme case. Uh, I, in 2005, was uh, guilty of this. Uh, there was a project on cook stoves, right? And uh, we had funding from the Shell Foundation. Uh, we, not just the funding, but uh, we also had access to expertise, global expertise, the best expertise on cook stove design. And uh, for want of a better phrase, we went on a trip, uh, developed a few cook stoves, uh, 
a colleague of mine, a counterpart of mine of sorts in the marketing uh, group, uh, when she made her first visit to uh, the place where all these prototypes were spread out in Bundelkhand, and we'd actually done 1,200 houses, right, where these were being used, uh, she walks in and she says, how much does this weigh? And we're looking at each other because no one had ever weighed the product, right? Uh, a marketing and distribution person, her immediate concern was how do I ship this anywhere, right? And the three or four people that had worked on it, including international experts, had just you know, blanked out to that. So those are the worst kind of mistakes and the successes come from uh, doing that. Uh, one of Somin's most successful projects uh, was in the brick sector uh, where uh, there was a, uh, a technology, a vertical shaft brick kiln uh, as against bricks being laid out in the ground. Uh, people in China as a cottage industry had uh, innovated uh, a technology where bricks would travel through a shaft. Uh, so, uh, with again, international funding, experts, you know, who uh, were from the Swiss brick industry to our Chinese counterparts to Indian brick manufacturers. From day one, we were working with not just brick manufacturers, but the fire masters, the people in the brick industry. So that went really well. That technology has moved uh, to Nepal, Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, South Africa, Malawi, uh, simply because it's robust. The, uh, 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 it, as I said, I mean, things are complex, right? And if you can get uh, all the factors in that you need, you build the robustness to deal with, uh, you know, that complexity. Sorry, I, I hope that didn't take too long. I'm Samir yeah. from Belgaum. Yes, I sir. Have, I had uh, three things. One is uh, the Tara loom, then the Tara press for making the bricks, and the cook stoves. If all these three technologies, out of the two third that uh, are of your uh, prestige now, if they are put to different applications, for example, the weighing of the chula is uh, too too heavy. For example, they can be built on site. Is one. Yeah. So can can are these technologies available so that we can still take it further and uh, try to disseminate? Most definitely so, and uh, we're very open, uh, you know, with uh, all the details about the technology. So uh, chulas, are you talking about the portable metal stove or the? Metal stove as well as the uh, sure. cement and brick. Uh, uh, definitely, uh, drawings, etc. for that, the looms, etc. everything is available. Uh, we, we had a good run with all of these technologies. Uh, the Balram, for example, the yeah, brick, the press, uh, yeah. Uh, we developed that in 86, 87 and had a fairly good run with it till about 95, 96. Uh, we started getting signals uh, from, uh, you know, people who were using it, primarily community groups in villages, etc., that uh, hard physical labor is something that uh, people are going to want to do less and less of. Uh, so from about 2004, 2005 till now, all our machines now are partially mechanized, fully automated, all the, the entire range of brick making technology. Um, and, you know, it, it's, a, it, it, it's a question of whether that's desirable or not, but we just, you know, had very clear signals Yeah, the application can be different now. It yeah, can sure, be definitely. STP sludge uh, definitely. making and uh, just disposing those uh, definitely. sludge. Definitely. I'll, not uh, for the I'll share my contact details with you. We'd be very happy to share, you yeah, know, whatever we have. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Patara. Thank you. We will have Thank to wait. Thank you so much. We'll, uh, a little something for you, uh, oh. Aditya, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, for uh, I can see a few hands for more questions. We could. We would like to take this offline because we have another speaker here, after which we have our fellow session.